All right, joining me here today, none other than Christina Not, a uh, Philippine athlete out for medals in the Asian Games. Let's see if you'll get there, if I'm not mistaken, Christina. Uh, 2018, back, 20, uh, back in the Asian Games in Indonesia, not a podium mm. finish, but how are you feeling so far? Because the last time I got to see you, which is in Southeast Asian Games, you being healthy was the biggest thing on your mind. So how are yeah. you doing in regards to that? And how are you doing in general leading up to these Asian Games? First of all, thank you for having me. Um, and I feel a lot confident going into this championship out of all the championships that I've won into this season. Uh, this is the healthiest I've been all season. Um, and the numbers that you know I'm producing and training is definitely adding to the confidence going into the games. So I was healthy at Asian Champs, but I wasn't as fit as I am now. So I'm going in a lot stronger, a lot fitter than Asian Champs. And at Asian Champs, it's basically like a glimpse of what I'm gonna see um, as, far as, as far as competition at Asian Games. Um, and I missed the podium by one spot. So I'm a different athlete going into Asian Games. So I'm excited to see um, how Asian Games goes. Yeah, in your pet event, you were right, missed it by one spot, just a couple of tenths of a second uh, away from China's. You take a look at the mental part of your journey, because I remember mm -hmm. seeing you in the Southeast Asian Games, and it was a mixture of relief and frustration, at least, looking at you. It yes. was the relief that you came through it without the injury, but the frustration knowing that you could run a lot better, especially in a competition like the Southeast Asian Games. Where are you at with regards to that? Because we all know that that is probably 80% of the battle in terms of recovery. Yeah, definitely, you know, how I ended at, at Asian, or at the Sea Games, definitely fueled me. Um, so I made some changes, some drastic changes um, leading up to this point. Um, as far as location, as far as coaching changes and, and whatnot. So um, that definitely helped, but yeah, I just, I'm just a different athlete going into this this game and I'm excited and I'm confident going into it, so. Can you tell us about the drastic changes? I, I know you mentioned the coach and the, your training, but then what do you feel made the biggest change in terms of all of that? So the biggest change was going back to my old coach in the middle of my season. And with that coaching change, that means changing location. So previously at the beginning of this season, I was located in Miami, Florida, uh, training there. And now I'm in El Paso, Texas, which is two completely side, two completely different sides of the United States. I went from the East Coast to the West Coast, uh, basically as far as um, training and then not Normally people change like off season. I did it in the middle of my season because it was just, I didn't like how I felt at, at SEA Games. It's like you said, the mental battle, it's it's challenging like knowing that people who you know you're better than is beating you or is in footstep with you. And I'm just like, no, nah, I, I, something's gotta change, so. Oh yeah, there's definitely pride. There's definitely that competitive edge, obviously. But then knowing that when athletes, when I've seen athletes, uh, regardless of sport, recover from injuries or trying to get back mm -hmm. from where they were, normally they treat themselves smarter, they train better, they find the ways yeah. to manage properly. Uh, could you describe to us what the difference is between the KK before the injury and the KK right now? Definitely um, the communication between me and my coach. Um, it's it's like night and day. Like, I'm not saying like, you know, coach, this hurts. Like there's certain moments where you have to fight through the pain, but it's knowing what pain you can fight through or not. So my injury was a foot injury. So anything pertaining to the foot that I feel, I need to vocalize that to my coach and we adjust training um, accordingly. But as far as like, you know, tiredness or fatigue or lactic acid that stuff you have to fight through you take a look at what this could mean the asian games in terms of uh, your entire season in general when you look at the asian games just how high is it in terms of your priority in terms of your targets in terms of uh, what you want to do for this year in the entire grand scheme of things for you so this, it's it's funny because this is the last championship and this is the last race of many of the athletes 
been a long season specifically for Asian athletes. Um, so this is just a stepping stone to my preparation for Paris. So there's a saying that like mo many of my coaches have said, like last one, best one. And that's what I'm going in thinking and having that mindset going into this games. Is this the smartest you've been in your opinion? Yeah, I've definitely matured as an athlete. Um, just going, like if we look at the, the scheme of things, you know, my first Asian games was 2018. I was fresh out of college. Um, that was probably my biggest world stage um, at that moment. Um, and so much growth, so much learning has been developed in that time. So where are you at right now? I know we're looking at Paris as the goal, but mm -hmm. where are you right now in terms of making sure that once you get to Paris, you are as competitive as you can be, as confident as you can be, and of course, uh, making sure that everything's in place to make sure that you could show out the best as you possibly could. Right, I think where I'm at now is, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm learning and stuff. So you, what happened in Tokyo was the heat got the best of me. So on top of the things that I've learned and, you know, just utilizing the tools that I have in my toolbox now, instead of going back to old habits that didn't really get me anywhere. So KK, we're all curious to see what you can do in the Asian games. Uh, is there any message to all the Filipino supporters out there, even those just curious to see what you can do, uh, considering we all know your potential, what you could do. You hold the national records, you hold right. the, you, you could do a lot in the international stage. And we've seen that from time to time. What message do you have for all the Filipino fans, supporters, and even those casual onlookers going into the Asian Games? Records are meant to be broken. Those records are not going to be standing any much longer. Um, and yeah, track and field starts the 29th, and we are going until October 3rd. For the most part, I'm competing every day, so tune in. I believe it will be streamed on YouTube. We need all the love and support. Um, and thank you for all the love and support that you guys have shown me. Um, throughout this journey. Absolutely. KK, really appreciate you being here. I really appreciate your time. Uh, I don't know if it's late or early there, but either way, I feel like you may have just woken up. So please get your rest. <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, KK, have a great one. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.